had some snow. Very much? No, it doesn't look like it. How are you? Better. Thank you. Coffee? Oh, let me make it. I don't know. You finished waking up. You're not very awake yourself, are you? Do you sleep okay? Fair. Do you even go to bed at all? You the same kind of stuff you had on last night. I slept. Seneca. I won't start again. Can you just give me a minute? I want to apologize for the way I acted last night. Not at the end and not when Mother was here. But in the beginning when I stormed in here and yelled at you about Adam and told you to mind your own business and all that. I know you just want to help. I'm very glad you do. Okay? Okay. Now, can you tell me what to do about my mother? Oh, no. No, you don't. Not before breakfast. <laughs> okay. Why don't you give her a call? Now? We just start fighting again, and I feel so peaceful. Oh, maybe she does, too. Might be a good time to make contact. Yeah. Just a suggestion. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Of course she didn't. I've uh, been doing some thinking, Kim. About what? Oh, you in our situation. Would uh, you put Seneca on, please? Well, I'd rather talk to you myself. <laughs> please, I imposed you on him last night, and that was a big mistake, and I'd just like imposed to... Imposed me? Yes, I asked him to keep you there, and Mother, I... Mother, I refused to leave with you. That's what happened. Kimberly. Don't Kimberly me. I'm not 10 years old, and I'm not going to put Seneca on the phone to, so you can give him babysitting directions. Well, then you come home and you get them yourself. I'll expect you in 15 minutes. No. Then you expect me, and don't you go anywhere. Don't you dare move. some more for your mother. Swell. I'll get it. Kim, she's scared too. Oh, lovely. You didn't run away. You were saying? What were you saying? Oh, uh, just that I have some coffee for you. What's it like outside? It's uh, icy and very unpleasant. And now it's the same way in here. Never occurred to me to run away. Oh, delighted to hear it. When she refused to put you on the phone, I wasn't sure what I could expect. I wanted you to talk to me, and I still do. Seneca's been in the middle enough. I couldn't agree more. Go get your coat. I'm terribly sorry I walked away last night. I do realize she is my responsibility. Mother, please don't say that. I'll listen to whatever you have to say. I won't try to pick a fight. But I'm not going back to your apartment. You know, I had an impulse on the way over here, and it really is a pity I dismissed it. I really should have just walked in here, dragged her home by the ear, and given her a good, solid spanking. Ray, That's I don't the version, think... her version of a motherly instinct. Well, it's a hell of a lot better than your version of a dutiful child. All right, Kimberly, no more comments. And you really are, are talking to her as if she, she isn't here. I mean, you're, you're talking about her to me, as if she's not in the room at all. Well, aren't you a wonderful pair? What'd you do, work this strategy out? Ooh. 
I just can't get a perspective on this. Well, neither does Kimberly. I keep feeling like I've got to back off and get my thinking straight. Okay, then do it. How? How? She dropped herself on my doorstep. She will not come in. She will not go away. How the hell do I back off? I don't know what to do. Am I supposed to just let her walk the streets of New York City and pretend that I can ignore the... Yes, ignore me. I want you to. Now, look, just, just take a few days. She's welcome to stay here. She's invited. But will she stay? Well, why don't you ask her? I'd love to accept the invitation. Thank you. All right. Maybe that is the best thing for right now. I appreciate it, Seneca. Ryan! <laughs> Me? Hello, I'm in here. Hi. Uh, uh, somebody is hiding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where is she? No, oh, Ryan's gone for sleigh ride. And little John is to the zoo with his mother for the second time in one week, would you believe it? There's no one hiding around here except me. How did your experiment downtown go? Lousy, I couldn't work. Oh. Didn't it look cold for her to be out, especially since she was just sick? Well, she was standing at the window and she saw it start to snow and she started to cry. And you know John. Her temperature was normal, though, dear. I bundled her up. And off they went. They'll be back in a minute. A little fresh air, that's going to do the world good. Yeah, well, there's a strong wind out there, too. Well, John, I'll be careful. So, oh, let me take care of those. All right, I can do it, I can do it. It didn't go well for you down there, eh? I never got started. Oh. Got to Weehawken Street about 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> Nobody on the subway, I got to the apartment. Couldn't seem to go inside. How's your work? Looks like you've been doing great. <sighs> I don't know why I took these down to wash and they really weren't dirty. I guess it was just my excuse to iron, that's all. Don't tell me you were standing around down there all this time outside the door. No. Walked along the river. Well, maybe that's what you needed to do. Like you needed to iron? Yes. By myself. Here in Mary's room. Yeah. I felt she was with me for a while, too. I know what you mean. But then I couldn't hold on to it, so I decided to come and see Ryan, but uh, John's got her. Oh, Jack, she's safe and she'll be back in a minute. Goodness. You know, man, she's gonna be spoiled rotten if he uh, melts every time oh. she cries, so she wants to go out in the snow. Well, tough, you know? She can't have everything all the time. Both Mary and I want to be able to take no for an answer. Grandfather better understand that. Show him your bubbles? Yeah, I will. You know bubbles show him. Huh? I will show him my bubbles. Where is Prince Albert? He's where he was before, in the ape house. Remember with the orangutan? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he's bored. Well, maybe he is. Maybe because he doesn't have anybody to play with. Hello? Hello. Prince Albert, how are you today? <laughs> Not wonderful, huh? Now, what do you suppose he's thinking about? Bananas? <laughs> I don't know. But whatever it is, I feel sorry for him because he looks so sad. Maybe he's coming down with something. You know, Dr. Cohen said that gorillas catch a lot of the same things that people do. Prince Albert, do you feel bad? I 
think he's listening to me. Hey, come over here. Blow the bubbles where he can see you better. Blow him into the cage. See if, see if he'll uh, perk up. Albert have this much fun in weeks. Oh, is this all right? It just occurred to me we might be breaking a rule or something. Yes, you are, but there's no one around to report it. And if there were, they report it to me. I'm just glad to see Albert looking at having fun with something besides the walls. You must be the ape man. I mean, uh, Dr. Cohen's friend that found Prince Albert? I'm Owen Douglas. How do you do? I'm Delia Coleridge, and this is my son, John Reed Ryan. Hi, John. Hi. You're friends of Adam Cohen's. Yeah, and he works with my, a lot of people that I know at Riverside Hospital. And he told us last time we were here that you were on the expedition that brought Prince Albert to the United States. And you're in charge of all this? Oh, not the entire zoo, just the primates. Well, you're in charge of what we like best, especially Albert. Except when we first came in, he was sort of quiet. Is something wrong? He misses Victoria. Who's that? Victoria was his mate and the mother of his two children. What happened to her? We had to send her to Staten Island. Loose? The Staten Island Zoo. Why? Well, she underwent a drastic personality change and she didn't care for it much around here. She especially didn't care for Albert. So we thought a change of scenery might do her good. Did it? I'm happy to say that Victoria is doing very well in Staten Island. They got divorced. In the manner of speaking, gorillas aren't monogamous, but Al was crazy about Victoria. He feels rejected. Well, that's my theory, anyway. Poor Albert. <laughs> OK, one more time. And then we have to go, too. He likes these bubbles. <laughs> hey, little John, let's leave your bubbles with Mr. Douglas for Albert, and we'll get you some more on the way home. Is that okay? Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. Albert doesn't get many presents. He doesn't? Well, that's sad. We'll come back and we'll bring you surprises, if that's okay. Of course. Just don't try to give them to him yourself. If you don't see me around, ask a guard. Okay. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Prince Albert. Goodbye. Don't be sad. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Here, and I know somebody who's going to go to bed without any dinner. Wait for me. That's not the way I trained you. Come, will you wait for me? Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, here's my big girl. Oh, my goodness, goodness. You go for a walk with the dog, huh? <laughs> I missed you. Ah, oh, she's freezing. Gosh, she's warm as toast and ready for a nice long nap. Yeah, ready to collapse. Got to help you if her fever comes back. Will you please come off it, Jack? Hey, hand me her mittens, will you? Her mittens? I'll show you a trick. Don't tell me to come off it. You keep my daughter out for two hours of below freezing weather. And she's cold. And I don't mean her mittens, I mean her body. I don't worry about her mittens. Yeah, I may have said you'd be like this. Oh, that's right, John. It's bad. <clears throat> Just let me uh, put her down. I'll let you know how bad, huh? Here we go, honey. What do we got in here to play with? Hmm. hmm. Look at that. Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'll tell you, Jack. She had a few crusts of bread, same as Finn. Oh, come on. 
She had a little bowl of chicken soup, half a sandwich of greenbergs. Where's your sense of humor? Where's your sense? Is it possible you're already getting senile? You're really out for blood. I beg your pardon? The day I agreed to stay here, we had a discussion, an explicit discussion, as to who would be in charge of you-know-who. Zach, what in the world do you want me to do? Get your permission every time I want to talk to my granddaughter, huh? Or do you want me to get up 5 a.m. before you leave here and get your okay on the, ooh, hundred odd things I deal with her with every day? You know, Grandpa, for once you had a good idea, we're gonna work out a schedule the night before, starting tonight. Better yet, let's start right now, huh? Jack, will you listen to me, please? She had a perfectly marvelous time on her sled. She was warm. She was happy. I haven't seen her laugh like that in, in days. We'll break it up in three-hour segments. Nine to 12, 12 to three, three to six. I'll go get some paper. And what that man wants to do, he wants to make an automaton out of you. Well, he will over my dead body. Huh. Hey, Finn, come here. to perspective. Perspective? Yeah, actually, I'm glad she's gone. Well, that you uh, won't have to worry about anybody but yourself. Right. I can relax and I can be me. I had exactly the same experience getting Delia out of my hair. Right. I hate it. Most of all, I hate not being able to make it work. I hated that last week. This week, I hate not having her around. Nuisance though she is. Hmm. Trial, cross to bear, albatross. <laughs> I'm afraid she, uh, she doesn't love me anymore. She does. You know she does. She's a lot more than I know about Kimberly. Ray, you're everything to Kimberly. Why else would she leave to her whole life in Topeka and come to New York? To drive me crazy? Possible. <laughs> Not likely. <laughs> hey, you. Thank you for coming over. You always make it better. So do you. I was uh, really down before you called. Nah. Julia's coming back. You have Siobhan's word for no, it. No, that is Siobhan's opinion. She was also of the opinion that Delia would be overjoyed that I came looking for in Brooklyn. And lo, there is uh, utter silence. <laughs> Maybe it's a quiet joy. Possible. Not bloody likely. You know something odd? I have a strange desire to help you get back together with your wife. <laughs> Maybe our relationship is hitting a higher plane. I suppose that uh, that calls for another drink. Oh, oh. Mm. It certainly does. I'd like to help you uh, with Kim, too, but I'm afraid I'm not very good with children. Ugh. You wouldn't get very far with that attitude. Just mention the word child around Kim and she has a fit. She, uh, threatened to hold her breath and turn blue until she's called an adult. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, forgive me, but uh, Seneca's welcome to her. This is lovely. These, uh, I can feel these working. Hmm. A little bit more and I won't be able to feel anything. Oh, well, well, what the hell? <laughs> now, the problem for you and Delia is that you have your signals crossed. That's your only problem. I mean, you're both sorry. You both want to get back together again. You just I not... keep giving her signals. I even asked Siobhan to pass them along. I mean, what kind of signals does she want? Big fat ones. Something you can hold on to. Nothing vague for Delia. Nothing subtle. I'll carve I love you in a piece of stone, one of the uh, World Trade Center towers. Mm-mm. No, I think for Delia, the Empire State Building would be better. <laughs> But seriously, I'm starting to get tuned into this. Now, I think there must be something we can do to straighten the two of you out, to mend your broken little hearts. You're cute. Also a little, uh, little drunk. Nonsense. Absolutely. However, I could use something to eat. Then I will put my razor-sharp intelligence to helping the two of you. Come on, feed me, feed me. And then you'll fix it? <laughs> you won't believe how fast. <clears throat> <laughs> Come on. Let's go.
a new original reality series on SoapNet. Mom and Dad are moving in for a financial intervention. It's a matter of life or debt. Bank of Mom and Dad, all new Wednesday at 10, only on SoapNet.